Lyrical Opera Theater proudly presents... Hi, welcome to another edition of Lyrical Logs. We're very lucky today, we have Jessica Benson with us. She's singing the role of Nanetta in our upcoming Falstaff. So Jessica, can you tell us about your character, Nanetta? So Nanetta is the daughter of Alice and Ford. Um, and she's also, she's, she's young and she's innocent and she's, and she's um, also in love with a tenor and his name is Fenton. Of course. <laughs> and, um, and so they, so she's part of the, you know, the whole scheme of all of the stuff that's going on in the opera. But then she also has her own private little story mm -hmm. um, with Fenton and they, they keep their, they're in love and they keep their secret um, because Ford wants Nanetta to marry Dr. Caius, who she thinks is just like the worst thing ever. He's old and yucky and he's got this cute tenor. Right. So, uh, so that's, that's what, um, as far as plot goes, mm -hmm. um, that's how it is, and so, cool. So, um, we were discussing earlier, Verity did a very interesting thing in this score, and we've been discussing various reasons why, but, um, interestingly enough, he puts Alice on the high notes, and Aneta is singing in harmony, and no, the, no, the thing that's problematic about that is that Nanetta's voice is a coloratura soprano, which is typically lighter and higher, and Alice's is a full lyric soprano, which is typically lower and heavier, and normally you want the lower, heavier voice underneath, and you want N Nanetta's coloratura soprano on top. Mm -hmm. So why did Verdi do this? I don't know. I've looked around and asked people, and I've read musicologists, like, and people's like dissertations on it, and there's like no answer. The only thing I could think of is Verdi, very specifically, because he wasn't commissioned to do this. He just did this for fun, really, mm -hmm. and he had tons of fun with it. And not only is it funny because it's a farce, but it's also funny because he's poking fun at opera all throughout, throughout the, whole the whole thing. Show. So I'm thinking. It very well could be just another practical joke that he put in there for opera singers. Could be. And it's like, you know what? We're not going to have the light opera, uh, the lighter soprano on top. We're going to put a lead on top. We're going to make her learn how to sing harmony, oh, right. for example, right? <laughs> that actually kind of made it tip because I listened to this opera uh -huh. a lot. And so when I got the score, I was like, wait, wait, I'm not singing the top line. Dang it, now I have to actually learn new pitches. Right. <laughs> I know. So, yeah. Yeah, very interesting. We have all sorts of theories, but nobody really knows why. Maybe it's that he had a certain soprano that was singing Nanetta, and he had a certain soprano singing Alice, and he did it based on what they could do. Sure. Maybe Nanetta could cut. Maybe. Maybe. She, I, I have, don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. So, do you have any tidbits about Falstaff that our viewers might find interesting? Um, I, well... Like I was saying before, this opera in so many ways is just one big joke. I mean, the fact that it ends in a fugue is That's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> like, and actually, um, Boito wanted to make it originally end with a marriage, with a wedding. Mm. Um, but Verdi's like, ah, uh, no, I'm gonna write a fugue. And it's gonna be a Lufa fugue, which means a funny fugue. A funny fugue. And yes. so it's like, what? And and it's it's funny because it's because Verdi is very well known for your stereotypical soprano arias with lots of applause and tenor arias with lots of applause and then the tenor and the soprano sing with each other and then they have these long beautiful duets and and then there's applause in this opera there's there's no place to applaud, to applaud. anywhere it just goes it's just through. composed through it's so different from everything else he's ever mm -hmm. written and he pokes fun at what he has written all over the place so, um, so yeah, like just there, like there's a aria that Fenton sings, and right at the end of it, you think that, it, and then so, and the netta comes in and they sing this big beautiful chord and with harps and it's just the most gorgeous, gorgeous. music in the whole opera, and then and the, the audience complete, is ready to go, yeah, and you're just waiting because this is the third act too. You have like nobody has been able to clap yet, and 
Then Alice comes running in with this cloak and says, "No, no, put this stop, on." No. <laughs> and he's like, "Why?" And then Nanetta, instead of saying, "Mom, uh, we want to go make out now," so no, I'm like, "Put this on." And then that's that, and we just move on. You don't get to clap for the tenor. You don't get to clap or listen to this expected duet between, you know, the, these couple this couple that you would expect that from so mm -hmm. I just think it's so funny that he does he does that sort of thing all over in this opera and I love the hee-haw hee-haw he yeah like literally throughout the whole score I found them when I was doing the tracks hee-haw hee-haw making fun of it you know uh, of again opera but uh -huh. also demonstrating that you know everyone's a uh, yeah a, okay a donkey. A donkey. A donkey. A donkey yeah we're like what's the word that what's is the word not a donkey <laughs> Donkey. A donkey. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jessica, <laughs> thank for you. coming today to do a lyrical logs. Fall staff is coming right up. We open on uh, April 7th, and then we have more shows April 14th, April 20th, and April 22nd, right in the, the historic Midvale Performing Arts Center. So we hope you all join us and um, come and see this wonderful final comedic opera by Giuseppe Verdi. Bye-bye, everyone. Ciao, ciao. Bye.